name is um, uh, Shay Yakiwowo. Um, I was elected onto Newham Council when I was 22. I don't know what I was thinking. I remember there being some wine and it's probably why I applied at such a young age. Um, and it's been uh, one of the steepest, best, worst and um, one of the kind of experiences I've ever had. And I would truly recommend it, but probably would have had a good couple of words with myself when I was 22 to kind of prepare myself for this. So that's why I'm really keen to do things like this. So thank you Parliament Project for letting me be involved to speak to women who are thinking about entering public life and just to kind of be more ready for what is to come. Um, so as I mentioned before, I was elected when I was 22. So it meant that, wow, there is this young woman who is black in the council. That is not the average kind of person that is on the council these days. What is going on there? And so there was a quite a big publicity um, around me being um, the youngest uh, a Nigerian um, from, from East London. It was just a lo lots of stories that could be made about it. And I, I guess I had a decision there about, um, about do I, I guess there was a decision there that I didn't really think through about, okay, do I wanna ride this wave to encourage more people who are like me from diverse groups, women, <clears throat> to get more involved in politics or do I kind of not want the limelight I guess I didn't really think about the decision I was making I just went for the former because I was like yeah let's change the face of politics etc cetera, etc cetera. and I think if I if we had this conversation earlier if I think I if I think if I thought it through I probably wouldn't have said no so maybe it was a bit of a blessing in disguise so through the kind of big kind of media attention I was fortunate to do a lot of cool stuff like I've been on BBC uh, Victoria Derbyshire I have um done uh I've done I do a lot of reading the papers with Vanessa um, Feltz in the mornings um I've spoken at a lot of um at a lot of uh, uh, conferences and um a lot of platforms TEDx's and stuff like that um all around kind of representation diversity and inclusion and just like what does po what does local politics mean and making that more accessible to young people through that i was um asked to come to the european um, parliament to give um some advice to meps around how we can get more young people interested in european politics um how um this was before brexit so probably i didn't do a, a a good job at getting more young people involved and um uh yeah getting us to stay um and it was through that i was at this uh the hemicycle so the the big you know european parliament where everything everyone comes together to talk about european solidarity so it was a really amazing moment and i was also asked to be a part of or attend another panel um about this about the syrian refugee crisis this is when it was at its peak um do you remember when the boy that was washed away at the sea and we saw it, it all so i was there looking to learn about like what can i do to as well like sharing about my my experience and about diversity and and, and local representation of young people and youth rights but also learning anyway kind of very long story short um uh there was a syrian refugee um living in portugal who was on the panel giving his 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 testimony and his ideas about what we could do to support the effort and um there was the french national in the room so don't know if you know the french national they're like um our ukip version but um a lot more far right and it was the kind of youth wing of them there's probably about a hundred of them in the room on this on the other side like on the right hand side it's a perfect kind of uh, positioning for them and they just began to boo um uh, this guy speaking and saying he was a um a scrounger he should go back home he's not he doesn't belong here and, you know i was taken back by like how we how what was happening i just couldn't believe it and as he was speaking and he was trying to be diplomatic it's like I, you, you can disagree with with my opinions but please allow me to speak i just my heart my just I, yeah i just felt for him and then they kept booing again as he was speaking saying all oh, immigrants should go home i said that's it being from east london um i had to say something and i said something i made a speech i made an intervention and the european parliament filmed it a few months later they put the film they put the speech up online and it went viral um, it has something like 1.5 million views, a lot of like retweets and hits. And you know when something goes viral, when your family members start sending it to you on WhatsApp, asking if that's you. Um, so this again was great, I guess, in terms of what I was saying, but then it brought a lot of um, abuse. Um, so about February last year, 
there was just a wave of abuse. I was called all variations of the N-word, um, uh, references to being lynched, death threats, stuff about my uh, private parts, um, about blacks being exterminated, and it was just relentless across all kind of social media. Uh, and it was through that that I was like, well, this is not right. Something needs to be fixed. And I became more agitated and annoyed with social media companies because I was making complaints. I was re reporting it. I was relying on friends like Laura Bates from Everyday Sexism and my MPs to help me flag it up, flag it. But what about if women, women who are not in these privileged positions and don't have these networks, how are they meant to be heard by social media companies? So I began to be really annoyed by the lack of response for them. And so set up something called Glitch UK, which was about fixing this glitch on our online world where we're seeing a, a, a trend of pushing women who have opinions online, particularly, particularly active women, from the online space and something needs to be done about it. And I guess there was, a, there was, there was concerns because this was not even a year after Jo Cox had died and I was on her leadership programme because I'm a counsellor, my, in, my information is, um, my information and my address is public and so there was a real kind of like, what are we going to do? And it just really annoyed me, annoyed me, like this is, shouldn't be what happened in 2018 in Britain um, for women that want to get into politics, so what are we going to do about it? Um, so it's through Glitch that, where we lobby social media companies and, dis and, and, and MPs um, to um, do stuff around online, viol online violence against women and girls. Um, we also provide training around how you can protect yourself online. So I'm going to share some of those tips with you guys in a moment. And we also um, do a lot around online citizenship and, digital di uh, and getting young people becoming digital citizens, like reclaiming that space again so it's positive. Um, so going to whiz through um some que some kind of questions i'm going to answer so um uh the first one is the kind of the highs and lows of um social social media it's great to meet new people it's great at exploring perspectives so you hear these things about hashtag black twitter hashtag asian twitter hashtag women twitter like these are good hashtags to jump on and see what people's perspectives are on certain things and challenge yourself and also meet people you probably will never get to meet in real life but you know able to kind of have this connection online it's great to meet your residents as well or people you're looking to your um to select you hopefully or or, or keep in touch with those that have elected you um just to find out what is going on so i i i did i created like lists on my on my twitter account of like community groups that i wanted to keep in mind so like the politicos um uh, I split up my ward, I split up the ward in terms of like community groups, but also like just residents that were online that I wanted to just check in with. Um, um, so yeah, it's really good at meeting people and just staying connected, but you just want to be careful that you don't make that your bubble and your echo chamber. Um, what is your purpose on social media and what do you do to achieve with it? So for me, it was about representation. It was about showing a new face of local politics and, and, and what, it, what it was about and what I was doing. It was about accountability. So I really tried to make an effort. It was sometimes really difficult, but you get into a habit of it, of like just doing a tweet or doing a, taking a photo of being somewhere, that, whether it was a meeting with officers, whether it was a site visit, whether it was, um, 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 uh, going to like your 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 your, um, your meeting your your political meetings to report back whatever it was just keeping it keeping a consistent thread of the stuff that you were doing online to show accountability and also using that to throw questions I used to say stuff hey I've got my uh, safe neighbourhood panel meeting coming up um in a few days time is there any concerns that you'd like me to feed back or um, yeah anyone got any any and using it to facilitate people so I'd get asked about um, does any can anyone um, Help with X, and I put a throw out on on Twitter, and you'd get loads of people coming up, and just been able to connect people was was great. And the third thing, and I, I can't see if I'm running out of time, so I put apologies. But the third thing is about um, using it as I call, what I call platform kudos. Um, so. I, we could go on and on and talk about talk about another time about what it's like internally within a party to, to, to as a woman um, to get things done. And I use my kind of online platform and the 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 the, the, the kind of following that I could generate as well as from, from my residents as well as people to try and give me the kind of kudos to get things done because when you're just a newbie a small fish in a big pond it's quite hard to kind of get your voice heard particularly being a black woman so being able to have the support of my residents and a profile was quite helpful and so it leads me on to the third question I'm going to try and answer for you guys um, which is what platforms do you use and what purposes so I use Twitter 
um, a, a lot to um, like have debates. I use like Twitter polls, which is really good when you want people to get quick, get quick opinions on things like um, quick consult, quick informal consultations on decisions that you want to make. Um, Facebook for um, uh, longer pieces and discussions. Instagram is really good if you want to reach a younger audience. And then WordPress. I like WordPress is just really good for regular blog posts. Um, I rec rec really recommend it um, having a, if it's fortnightly blog post where you just put, upload your councillor reports and what you're doing, um, residents really, really, really appreciate, uh, appreciate that. And as more powers are being devolved locally, it's just really important, I guess, to just let um, residents know what is going on. If you are on Twitter and you feel free to ask me this question because I'm running out of time, I can share some tips around security and policies you might want to set up for yourself around safeguarding and self-care and like how you can make sure you change your privacy settings so that you're not exposing your fa your family and your friends to potential like trolls and stuff and how you can get um a process set up for yourself where you want to do when you want to just quickly flag online abuse um to social media companies and to the police um la second to last question what impact can online abuse and negative comments have and what do you do about it um online abuse is 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 it's hard and some into some some sometimes it's probably harder than like your physical abuse because you'd be we'd probably be more more trained to kind of deal with that stuff but the online word online abuse with the words and you're not sure like who's saying it and and the potential threat like is it intimate or intimate in intimate or is it somebody that is like in texas or straight um texas uh usa like we, we we don't know so i think online abuse can have a real soft psychological impact and there's great research um done by amnesty international their ha hashtag toxic twitter campaign so i was one of their spokespeople and they've got really good data on the effects of the online abuse i recommend having a look at that because it's just a really good way of batting it back to particularly the men who just say oh it's just words you know you're such a snowflake you're so sensitive no it, they're, they're, there's real psychological impact of of, on, of online abuse hashtag not the cost um they've got really good research around um how it's how it's pushing political women out of pol um pushing po women po sorry pushing political women out of the public space and out of the political arena and a really interesting and sad fact they said that there's stats to show that even if women don't face the abuse themselves um by seeing women be abused it's already having effect on putting pe and putting women off um and i think the thing to do about it is to reclaim the public space. It is ours. It's the extension of the online world. And it, to do that is about championing other people. So if you see a woman being abused, like stepping and drown out the hate, like that's what helped me when I was getting abused. A lot of people were sending, that like, I never met, had sent solidarity messages with me. And it just, it, 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 it is just nice to kind of counteract the hate. Um, and then what advice would you give to, uh, what, what other advice do you have on public presence to increase visibility and raise profile? Um, so consistency is key. Like if you're gonna have a Facebook page, you're gonna have a blog page, like be consistent with it because people do wanna read it. People do want to read it. So it's about discipline. It's about scheduling when you're gonna, when you're gonna write something. And it doesn't have to be, you know, six pages long it can just be a quick blog post people just want to hear your voice and what you're what, what you're up to um think about your online brand like what do you want to be known for um i'm personally going through a transition of being known as a recovering politician to hopefully being someone who has an expertise on online abuse but wants to still keep um have a opinion and a perspective on online on, on local government so i want to become this kind of local government pundit so i'm now having to rethink about what my online brand is and what am i going to have an opinion on and what i'm going to try and stay quiet on local newspapers like don't dismiss them they have a really good um network of local people that people and readership so really try and make right build relationships with your like local editors and get them to cover stuff and um because that, that was really ama amazing again use twitter polls use facebook discussions try going live like periscope is really good or facebook live or instagram live when you're at something and like get people to tune in because people want to know what you're up to um um uh, then Skype surgeries. So try doing some online Skype surgeries or online coffee mornings as well. It's just a really good way of just meeting people who can't make your physical surgeries. And then maybe think about like going on a speaker circuit for a while. I don't think a speaker circuit should be forever because I think that's where creativity dies. But if you want to kind of like meet people, raise your profile, be known as an expertise on a, on a certain thing, like get on 
um, get on some lists, get get speak, get get familiar, familiar familiarize yourself with a certain certain topic, and start writing about it. So then people start inviting you to um, conferences and, and events.